resilience. We are proud of who we are and what we do. We are a founding member of the Football League. We are 1884. We are positive, inspired and passionate. We are now. We are moving together. We are ambitious and driven. We are progress. We are change. We are prepared, honest and humble. We are the highs. We are the lows. We are the heartbeat of our community. We are the famous black and white. We are the dreams come true. We are the club of opportunity. We are the memories. We are the yet to come. We are done. The bench is significantly stronger than theirs and will make change when we have to. And I can't express it enough to you. You have to gas out, you have to be brave on set pieces, right? And I put all them in the room, so I want you to look at them. Because they're the people that work hour upon hour upon hour, trying to help you all the time. And they're the people that will be there at the end of it to congratulate you or to be sorry for you. But they're the people you're playing for. All the people on the fucking wind wall you're playing for. And you could achieve something great. You could. And all I ask is you give it your best. Give it your fucking best. If it ain't your day, fucking fine. Get off, I'll send one of the game changers. So it's absolutely fine. But you have to start off with the mentality that you're going out to win the football game. That you're playing fearless. And you have to accept the fact some things you do aren't going to be perfect. So you might not get the opportunity to hit the perfect shot, the perfect cross. You might lose the ball twice when you get out. Don't give a fuck. Get out of them again. Get out of them again. There's not much I regret about my career. The thing I do regret is I didn't live in the moment enough. I didn't. It was about get the game done next game, get the game done next game. Don't enjoy anything. You get a little bit of that. Please live in the moment. Hello and welcome to the preview show from Rams TV. It is a massive day in League One. The top four playing each other. Leaders Portsmouth are away at Peterborough. And here at Pride Park Stadium, over 32,000 are expected to see second take on third. Yes, it's Derby County against Bolton Wanderers, two teams with automatic promotion in their sights. This picture could look a little different by the end of the day, of course, but the race really is on between the top five now. Peterborough and Barnsley both have games in hand on the top three. Portsmouth lead Derby by five points, but the leaders have a tough schedule to come. Every single moment matters from here on in. And the top four in particular, very much in form at the moment. Bolton thrashed Oxford United 5-0 on Tuesday, while Derby were beating Reading here at Pride Park for their third win in a row. Let's hear from the captain and the man who scored the match-winning penalty. It's Conor Harahan. Yeah, massive win. Um, delighted for it to go in first and foremost. Help the team get the three points. That's the main thing now, um, going into these last games. Uh, you know, done my homework, I suppose, on... Penalties with James being out, Colo. Um, I knew that I was going to be taking it. So um, pre-game, you do your homework, and uh, luckily enough for me, it paid off. Really, you were stood with the ball for a while. You had to wait a long time. What's going through your head? Uh, just the the plan that I'd done before, not to change. You know, you've you've got time there now to change your mind, change your routine, change your thoughts. It was literally, I've planned this. I know where I'm going to go. To stay the same, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, like you said, kept a bit of a calm head and an important time and uh, delighted for it to go in, really. 
Not too long ago that the side lost back-to-back league games for the first time all season. You've responded with three wins in a row. What does that say about the character you've got in that room? Yeah, massive. It's, it's been huge. Um, obviously, we had a couple of disappointing results uh, back-to-back, like you said, and we were really disappointed and we really wanted to bounce back and show a bit of character. And uh, uh, we have done that and we played really well in, in, in the main as well in, in the victories that we haven't kind of just crept over the line. I think, you know, Bristol Rovers was a really good performance. The other night, I think first half we were really good. Lost away a little bit in the second half, but still got over the line, which is important. So I think uh, not just showing character, I think we've come back and, and played some good stuff as well, which is, which is good for confidence, of course. I've spoken to a lot of the guys recently about the amount of experience you have in that room in terms of previous promotions and you've got a couple on your CV as well. Are you taking anything from the success you had at Villa, the success you had at Barnsley from League One? Are you trying to bring that into this season? Um, yeah, a little, a little bit I suppose. I think you've become more familiar now with maybe this time of the season. I think um, start of the season, middle of the season, you kind of just roll with us and you try and help the lads and being captain, you might, you know, if someone's looking a bit off or down or lacking confidence, you have a word with them or put an arm around them. But I think now it's more, you know, uh, the experienced lads are more familiar with this situation, uh, the run-in. Um, so you try and help the, the, the younger lads along uh, a little bit as well. But, you know, you look at kind of Cash and O'Bordy's out with the minutes and, and Sibs who are they're all playing really, really well, and so it doesn't seem to be phasing them at all. And to add that experience, then on top of it, it's uh, we're heading in the right direction, which is good at a key time. I was looking back at the, the Barnsley promotion that you had. Um, I think you clinched a playoff place on the final day. Then you yeah. went up through the playoffs, and we all know what you know a trial that that can be. How much does does it help you that you've been through it before? Yes, it's, it's massive, of course. I've uh, had a couple of promotions, like you said, and they've been through the playoffs, so I'd love a, a top two one this, this, this time. But um, yeah, it, that Barnsley one was a freak one. Kind of, we were, you know, bottom four, I think, in November or something ridiculous. And then we went on a crazy run, nicked in the last day, like you said, and, and ended up winning it. So um, that was a bit, a bit of a freak one. But you look at them, experiences, you know, consistent performances um, you know taking care of business every single day giving yourself the best chance to perform at a weekend and like you said confidence is massive in this game it just snowballs uh, from game to game and suddenly you go out and you think we're just going to win today um, so you know off the back of a couple of good results at the minute now we feel in a good place heading into an important game no doubt at the weekend yeah you won Tuesday night the rest of the top five won in the week as well um, we talk about what this team is going through but I guess there's four other teams going through exactly the same yeah yeah for sure without doubt I think we're all looking at each other now um, after every game what are the results do they go our way I think when we lost a couple um, especially the Barons who won that hurt because obviously they are creeping back up on us you know last night Peterborough obviously won as well because they would have been looking at us Tuesday and then we were looking at them last night so it's just it's just the, the way it goes um, and it's look it's literally who's gonna you know I, I still feel like Portsmouth are not too far away they're in touching distance and I do feel like um, whoever handles the best out of the next eight to nine games or whatever it is whatever people have left I know a couple of people have got games at hand or whatever uh, will get over the line really. Uh, Connor Harahan there, who knows what it takes to get out of League One. Derby have a lot of promotion experience in that squad and on the coaching staff as well, of course. And they might need it today up against a side just a point behind them in the table. Well, Bolton made the playoffs last season and they've been in the mix since this campaign kicked off back in August. A 5-0 thumping of Oxford on Tuesday underlined their promotion credentials. They fought back to get a point at Barnsley last week as well. Uh, all this despite being without their top scorer, Dion Charles. But they did bring in the reigning League One player of the season, Aaron Collins, back in January. Uh, a sign of the strength in depth that is available now to manager Ian Everett. A man with Derby connections, of course, started his playing career here at Pride Park Stadium. Uh, well, I've been talking to the voice of Bolton Wanderers, BBC Radio Manchester's Jack Dearden, to get a view on the visitors this afternoon. Uh, he is feeling pretty bullish about Bro Bolton's pro promotion credentials. Yeah, pretty good. Um, obviously, with everything that which everybody will be aware of that Bolton Wanderers have been through in the last few years, I know. Derby have been through the mill as well to an early to a, a certain extent, but uh, yeah, um, it, it's very difficult. Ian Everett was talking about uh, trying to stay cool and calm. I'm not sure how easy that will be uh, for the fans and everybody connected. It's a really, really big game, and as big a game it's probably been certainly. Uh, I wouldn't quite say in recent history for these two clubs, but um, 
it's really, really an important game as as well. Uh, so important with the three points. But there's still, I, I know, I, 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 forgive me, I don't want to sound like managerial speak, but, you know, there is no promotion at the end of it. At five o'clock on Saturday at Pride Park, uh, there will there might be a bit of a celebration, but there won't be any promotion for either of these two teams. And, well, we know what they're going to say, still a long way to go, et cetera, et cetera. But I can't tell you, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Uh, such a big game and uh, I mean, obviously as you've just mentioned I've covered Bolt Wanderers for 27 years now uh, and it's been good it's been bad it's been ugly but whatever else it's been it's never ever been boring I think the same is very true of, of following Derby County how good were Bolton on Tuesday night that win over Oxford? Oh, oh fantastic uh, I'm sure lots of people We'll have seen uh, video clips either on social media or watched it on TV. Uh, no, absolutely outstanding. It really, really is. The best they've played. I mean, did it beat Exeter City 7 0 earlier this season? I just thought that that performance on Tuesday just topped that as well. I know they scored a couple of goals fewer, uh, but no. And, and I, you know, I've got to be honest and say they were unlucky, uh, went to Barnsley. A week last Tuesday, came back from 2-0 down in that game, played really, really well. Uh, and I think that set the scene, uh, of course, went to Exeter as well. Uh, in fact, I was at Exeter last last week uh, uh, and I came back on the train. When it stopped at Bristol, all your fans got on. Uh, and, uh, the, well, to be honest with you, one of the Bolt Wanderers players uh, was in the carriage, Cameron Jerome. But he was really good. You know, your guys were really good as well. They had a, they had a right old chat. I was kind of sat a couple of seats behind. I was acting like a bit of a minder, really, to be honest with you. But uh, no, it was really, really good. Uh, and it set it up nicely, hasn't it? With uh, with what's at stake, you know, wherever you look, there's a little bit of something that you will take away from this game. He never going back. That's where it all started for him in his, you know, his senior football career at Derby County. Uh, whichever way you go. And by the way, the last time Bolton won at Derby County, he never wasn't even born. In the league, they have won there in a cup tie. I have commentated on a, on a Wanderers win at Pride Park when uh, I think Brownie was the manager then. Phil Brownie in that intermediate period, just before Big Sam was appointed, or around about that time. But uh, he haven't won in the league at Pride Park. Since, uh, well, he wasn't even born the last time Bolton won a league game at Pride Park. BBC Radio Manchester's Jack did, and they're certainly feeling confident ahead of Bolton's visit to Pride Park Stadium this afternoon. It's second against third, remember. Massive game in the context of the League One promotion race. So how's the Derby boss, Paul Warren, feeling ahead of this one? Not really. Um, I see it as a game that neither team don't want to lose. I mean, ironically, we'll both be going for it. I'm not saying it like, we, I don't know if you've ever seen any of my teams set up defensively. I don't think I've ever done that. But I just think it's a game that neither, if you lose, it's a bigger blow. When you walk off the field, it's a bigger blow. It felt a bigger blow when we lost at home to Peterborough than we lost at home to Charlton. I mean, both, I felt physically sick, obviously. But um, so I, I, it has more, you know, connotations further down the line, the result of this game. The performance doesn't matter a jot. It's about both teams trying to win and get the upper hand. But and I've said this in loads of interviews, with eight games to go, there's still 24 points to go. So even if you lose it and you win six of your other games, you, you might be handsome. Um, so, yeah, it's just about preparing the lads as best we can. Three games in a week. Um, it's been uh, notoriously tough for us. So um, it's about trying to refresh the lads as best we can and pe pick the best team to hopefully go out and win. What's your assessment of Bolton? Well, um, without revealing too much, obviously. Yes, yeah, it's, it's difficult not to be too tactical. I think they're a, um, a really well managed club. I really like Ian. Uh, I, I think he's a really good coach, a really good guy. Um, I mean, I say that about most managers. Maybe I just really like people, but I, I, I really like him. I like the way his teams play. I've seen a lot of them. Um, I know they've got a couple of injuries. You know, they've got. A, you know, two of their strikers out, although they've still got two very formidable strikers to come in. They've got Collins, they've got from Bristol Rovers, so uh, wow, um, and Bud Varson, so they're not weak. 
Um, and uh, they have a style that they play to, and maybe they you know, haven't picked up as many points recently. They haven't really lost loads. They just had a few draws that are always awkward, and sometimes you go through that phase. Peterborough went through that phase. We've been through that phase a couple of times. So, uh, And they've put themselves in a really good position. They've had, you know, what's it, is this is their third season, I think, in League One, if I'm right. So um, they've sort of built and improved the team year on year, and, and everyone at their club, I presume, will be thinking it's their year. So I really like him as a football club. I used to live in uh, uh, town for a bit when I played for Wigan, so I'm really uh, familiar with the area and know that the club has massive expectations, used to be Premier League, used to play in Europe uh, and all that. So I understand all that as well. So with that comes a pressure for the, for the players, not, not dissimilar to uh, us. You mentioned the, the injury issues that, that they've had. Um, you've well, still got some, but, but had injury problems as well. You, you made a quadruple change on Tuesday, which was... I listened to your commentary. Very strange, I think. Well, Did you say very strange, see unique? It. We don't see it very often, I think you'd agree. Um, my question really was, you, you weren't in the position to do that that many weeks ago, were you? How, how different has the dynamic been for you in terms of managing the squad now that you've started to get some players back? Yeah, it's, uh, it's easier and harder in equal measure. Like, obviously, if you have 18 uh, players who believe they should start the game, uh, it's obviously harder than having 12 uh, and six who are just enjoying the ride. So, uh, however, from a manager's point of view, like if I want to change three or four for Saturday and I think it's the right thing to do, I don't think it makes us weak. I just think it makes us different. So it does give you options. It does give you... I mean, you know, I really want to get Tomo on the pitch midweek. Um, and in the end, I, I was going to leave Sibs, put Tomo in the middle of the pitch, um, for some energy so he's the only sub that didn't get on apart from the keepers but respectfully they don't count um, good coaching you can put that on my coaching grave um, gravestone um, so uh, yeah so you just want to get uh, players on the pitch you want to rest players but you, you don't want to do that if you know you don't think the player behind you is as good as the player in front of you if that makes sense so having a strong squad is like imperative to success and i've said it all along if we've we're successful if you play 20 minutes or 25 games or 45 games every you know every contribution matters so um you just want your best players fit like you know waggy's getting a little bit more like it we've got wash training today which is a right boost for us uh so yeah we feel like we're sort of getting there unfortunately you know the season might end too soon for a few, but hopefully Colo will come back. Ryan Nyambi won't. Um, so, yeah, so we've been... I've never known a season like it in my career, player, coach, manager, where we've been blighted with so many injuries. But we're fortunate that we've got a, a pretty good squad um, that gives us a chance. And there he is, Derby boss Paul Warren. Everyone in action in League One today. We've talked about the top four playing each other already. Uh, Barnsley could be the biggest beneficiaries of that. They're at home to struggling at Cheltenham today. And there'll be a big turnout at Reading as they host Cambridge uh, with the future of the club still very much in doubt. Reminder of the situation at the top. Portsmouth lead by five points. Derby have the edge over Bolton with Peterborough and Barnsley three and four points behind respectively, but they have the games in hand. Lincoln City, by the way, have got themselves into the race for the final playoff place. At the bottom, there's a five-point gap between Cheltenham and safety, but now we could do with a few more points just to ease their nerves. Uh, it's a question of when, not if, now for Carlisle, who are heading back to League Two. But for us, today is all about the League One promotion race. Derby County against Bolton Wanderers is available to overseas viewers on Rams TV this afternoon in Matchday Live from 2.30 UK time. Get your Game Pass now at dcfc.co.uk. And we'll be back here with reaction, whatever happens after the game as well. Until then, goodbye.